Hi guys. I know my glasses are like, there's so much glare. It's bright outside. Sorry. Suck it up. All right. Today, uh, different types of readings. Yes, that's next on my list. Um, different types of readings. There really aren't very many. And a lot of people feel like they can't do one because they're really good at another. Um, it just takes a different kind of Ah, gracious, I can't find the word. Um, just because you're really, really good at one-on-one -on -one readings doesn't mean that you can't do gallery readings. In fact, most people that are good at readings are good at readings in general. Um, the reality is we just kind of get overwhelmed by the people. Um, people mostly prefer to do one-on-one. -on -one. It's really nice to have a very quiet spot where you can sit with a client in a quiet manner and just relax and enjoy the reading. Um, more than likely though, if you're actually trying to pick up a bigger clientele, you're going to be doing psychic fairs, which is nice because it's one-on-one, -on -one, but almost always is you're packed in very close and it's gonna be very loud. So your concentration ability needs to be higher on the focus level than when you're just one-on-one -on -one and you can relax because there's gonna be a lot going on. Um, and I can tell you from doing uh, the Lilydale volunteer thing for raising money for them, they literally will pack you in next to each other. And that's fine, you know, that's great for them, you know, the more mediums to have, the more money that they can raise for the foundation. You have to be able to concentrate and focus and rise above that. Completely different if you're doing a gallery reading or if you're doing a church service, right? Where it's one of you up on a stage and a whole bunch of people. Now, I don't know about you, but people scare me. <laughs> and there's gonna be like a lot more dead people. So you need to be able to focus differently. I still can't think of that word. Um, to focus differently and adapt, there you go. That's the word, adapt, okay? So you're still doing one-on-one -on -one readings from a gallery or at a service, but instead of more mediums, there are more clients, okay? Um, and again, phone readings, Skype readings, you're not with a person, but you can still feel their energy and hear their energy. For me, when I was doing the radio readings, um, hearing their voice on the phone was important. And in a way, asking their permission, obviously, to do it for the radio, we would ask for their first name and their date of birth, okay? Um, for other people, you know, it might be a full name and something else. Um, but it, that is a matter of asking permission to use their vibration to do a reading for them. I'm big on permission, big on that, that's sexy. Consent is sexy, consent is sexy. Um, so when we're talking about clients one-on-one, -on -one, obviously it's a lot easier and it's a lot quieter. So you can relax your focus and just whatever comes to you, comes to you. When you're doing a one-on-one -on -one reading in a larger area, and we're talking psychic fairs, um, you know, volunteer stuff here, um, it's going to be a little more difficult purely because of the volume, okay? A lot of those places get very loud and you don't even realize it until you're, you know, I can't hear you, what, what was your question, you know? Um, so for that, what we really need to do is connect with the person. And a lot of times, especially for that, for me, I would hold hands. Um, and it might be kind of weird for people, but for me, that's what I do. Some people ask for a jewelry or keys or something. And what that is, it just establishes a stronger connection so that you're more focused on the person. That makes sense? Okay. Um, as far as phone readings, um, for that, you're concentrating on their voice. Okay. So you're reading their energy differently instead of being person to person you're hearing them, okay? So it takes a different kind of focus and it's really, really good to try and practice. The same thing with Skype. Even though you can see the person, what you're really concentrating on is their voice and their vibrations, okay? Because some people can't see auras when you're not in person or angels or spirits when you're not in person and that's fine. So what you wanna focus on is their voice, okay? You're taking the vibration level of their voice and going from there, okay? Um, Gallery readings. There are different ways that you can present to a gallery or a service. I'm talking about spiritual services here too. Um, one of the ways is my favorite way, which is throwing it out there. I find this what I consider the fairest way to get readings for people because instead of picking the people that want the readings the most and they will always be in the center aisle so that they can see you, 
and or a front and I, it's a mental thing I don't know why they did it just that's the rule okay um, but the people that may need it the most may have came come in late and be in the back or you know just something different okay so what I do is I take whoever the first dead person that comes to me is and I give the description and the evidence and I say can anybody identify with this person okay sometimes two or three people will take it and you'll get more things and narrow it down to one person and then deliver the message okay that's throwing it out there all right the other one is direct to one person so again you're doing a one-on-one -on -one reading but you're picking the person from the gallery okay so instead of picking the dead person you're picking the living person all right um, a lot of people do that simply because it's easiest for them okay um, now again at that point you're not doing every person in the gallery okay now if you have like a home reading there's like 10 people then that's fine but I'm talking like a hundred people okay 50 people whatever number is bigger than what you can do in 30 minutes okay and I'm pretty good at jumping to person person but you know what it's one-on-one -on -one again you're just in a bigger group now the hybrid for a gallery which is very much a mix of both um, some people consider it more fair I don't know simply because I'm really bad with directions so they will take the dead person that comes to them and say I think I'm in this area who among the four people of you recognize this person and can take this person um, so you're not really picking one person you're going to the area that the person is taking you to now I've tried to do that before because you know we're supposed to practice but the problem is I always end up on like the wrong side completely the wrong area so I stick to throwing it out there because that's what I'm good at okay um now again there's nothing good or bad about either of these I find that someone will either be especially skilled at one or the other it is extremely rare to find both okay so if you're really good at one-on-one -on -one, when it's really quiet that's awesome most everybody is you know especially when it's one-on-one -on -one, because then you know you're limited to your dead people um, but when it's one-on-one -on -one within a psychic fair is when most students or beginners will have their trouble okay um, it's just overwhelming because there's so many energies there's so many living people there's so many dead people there that everyone's just clamoring for attention um, so what you need to do is build the space between you and your client one-on-one -on -one. again this is one-on-one -on -one. or you know it's a daughter and her mother or whatever you know you build rapport with your clients and again the easiest way to do that is through touch okay um, whether it's holding the person's hand which is what I like to do or you know asking for you know kind of are your watch or your keys or something that you have on them all the time I'm terrible at that just I am so I hold hands okay another thing is you can build a little psychic bubble around you guys so that you can focus better on who's in the bubble okay um, what else phone readings um, I know some people who have stumbled on phone readings and I I think it's more of a mental block for us because we perceive it as being harder because we can't see the person um, I would like to suggest to you you try doing readings blindfolded period and a conversation blindfold yourself close your eyes and don't open them and then you'll realize you can do it with your eyes closed you can do it over the phone because it's the same thing you're not watching the person you're hearing their voice okay so it's developing a new skill but you have to have faith in yourself that you can do this and I have faith in you you just need to practice okay so phone readings Skype readings one-on-one -on -one in person quietly one-on-one -on -one in a psychic fair gallery and service readings one-on-one -on -one, throwing it out or the hybrid okay these are really pretty much all there is um, if I miss something let me know I'll discuss it uh, but when you're thinking of practicing these are the things that you need to be practicing at you should be practicing at all of them absolutely you should um, you know get a cheap booth fee get a small tent go to a psychic fair do it outside charge like five bucks be ridiculously cheap because you know that gets you the most practice in the most amount of time okay sure it may or may not pay your booth fee but you should invest in yourself so that booth fee should be your class fee for the day all right 
I take that very seriously. All right. Just because you're charging five bucks, tell people up front, you know, I'm a student. I'm here to get my practice in. You know, I, it's not cheap because I'm bad. It's cheap because I would like to see as many people as humanly possible today and help everyone that I can. And people always understand that, you know, I help a lot of people with that. Um, so just practice, 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 you know, because the more you practice, the more you learn, the more able you are to help the clients. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, I'm going to be talking more about the business side of it. Um, but this is definitely a starter for that so that you know where you're going, what your focus, um, and what you want to do, whether it's on the side or just for service. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening. Love you guys. Bye.